tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about Hawaii's erupting volcanoes and the amazing silver sword plants that grow upon them. We'll have a volcano painting party at the Mokupapapa Discovery Center in Hilo, and witness the creation of art inspired by the work of photographer Harry Durgan and videographer Damian Barrios. Then, I'll show you how to draw the rare silver sword plants that grow high on top the volcanic slopes of Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa on Hawaii Island and Haleakala Volcano on Maui. Finally, we'll have a silver sword painting party at Frank Shaner's art studio in Kula. Enjoy all this and more on a red hot silver sworded episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Hawaii's volcanoes have been putting on a spectacular show in recent years. It's all part of the process of building an island chain. The island of Hawaii is currently the center of these volcanic displays, but all Hawaiian islands were originally formed this way. Many artists are enamored with the fierce beauty of these active volcanoes and of Pele, the goddess of fire. Eruptions and lava are hot subjects in historic and contemporary art. When we return, we'll join a volcano painting class at the Mokupapapa Discovery Center in Hilo. Hawaii's monk seals and green sea turtles have been around for millions of years. When their numbers got low, they became protected by law. These animals are returning to beaches they've not come to for hundreds of years. This causes excitement and sometimes conflict. Honuen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available at the Kilauea Lighthouse or online at patrickchingart.com. A great place to learn about the Hawaiian Islands, and especially those of Papahanaumokuakea, is the Mokupapapa Discovery Center in Hilo. It's here that we gather to create art depicting the creation of the islands through volcanic eruptions. As inspiration for their art, participants use the photography of Harry Durgan, the U.S. Geological Survey, and video by Damian Barrios. Native Hawaiian specialist Hoku Pihana presented a Hawaiian oli or chant for the opening protocol. today and sharing this time to embrace the ano and, and beauty of Pele with Kumu Patrick who's going to share his artistic talents with us. Oh, right 
everybody. Nico. Ancient islands towered high, rising up into the sky. Goaded by wind, rain, and sea, at told they would someday be. You want to be in touch with your black and white mind so that everything you paint and look at, nature, you can see it in black and white. Creatures cross the ocean blue, birds and fish and insects do. Hello again to the gang at the Mokopapapa Discovery Center in Hilo for hosting us. By the time we were done, we had painted over a dozen new volcanic eruptions. Beautiful. When we return, I'll show you how to draw a famous and rare plant that grows high on Hawaii's tallest volcanoes. And it's called the Silver Sword. Hey friends, it's me, Patrick Ching, and I'm here to introduce you to the Papahanao Mokuakea Song and Color Book Project. All you gotta do is just go to uh, www.papahanaomokuakeasong.com and here, I'm gonna do it right here. See, it's on the computer. And then when the website comes up, it might start playing some music and if not, you just press this little button right there and bing, boing. Magic. That's Kavika Kahiapo. And he's telling us about this song. You can even download the coloring book pages and the ukulele chords. Hmm. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Scroll down and get the free coloring book pages. Right there, you 
can download the coloring book pages, print them out, and color them. See, look. Now this downloads better with a laptop computer rather than a um, handheld device. Kabika Kahiyako. So if you want to learn a lot and have fun doing it, download, print, and color the pages at papahanaomokuakeasong.com papahanaomokuakeasong.com Some of Hawaii's most spectacular flowering plants are the ones known as silver swords. Their Hawaiian name is ahinahina, which literally means very gray or silvery. The ancestors of silver swords are a tarweed native to California that arrived in the islands millions of years ago and evolved into the silver swords we know today. Separate species of silver swords can be found on Haleakala on Maui and Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa on the Big Island. The silver swords inhabit high altitude zones from around 5 to 10,000 feet in elevation. These amazing plants live from a few years to a few decades old and only bloom once in their lifetime. Their spectacular bloom stalk may be over 6 feet tall and have hundreds of beautiful flowers in them. All right, friends, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing a silver sword. And I'm going to do it just like I start any other drawing. I'm going to be pressing softly, softly. forming things up. I'm going to put a little circle right around there for where the base of the silver sword starts. Then I'll put another kind of an oval for where the blossom continues. Okay, so it's going to be like a little explosion right there with the flowers right up there. Now I'm pressing softly when I start, softly. you know, I'm using a pen, you can use a pencil, whatever. But the reason we press softly is because we don't really want to end up seeing these lines, you know, they're just kind of a guide for us. But the little um, base of the silver sword plant is going to be right there. And I'm going to start by just putting some of these little sprigs, I call them, just like this. Okay, and these are the ones, they're slightly curved like that. And if you put these first, it's going to be kind of nice to draw behind them. Now, I'll do a few rows of these, okay? Now, I'm not going to put as many as an actual silver sword plant has because they got a lot. Now that you got it like this, you can start to put some off to the side like that. And just imagine how they would start to look if they started to come right towards you, yeah? Then I'll put in a few sprigs that connect the lower part of the plant to the upper part. Now when we get to the flowers of the silver sword, we can just basically use some circles. And I tell you what, you can kind of arrange them in rows like this. You know, there's a big cluster of flowers. They grow up to like six feet tall or something. But you can start by just making kind of a row of circles. Okay. Followed by another row and another row. Do you notice how the flowers are kind of more like circles as they're right in the middle? And they get kind of sideways ovals as they go off to the side. And I think that'll be enough for my flowers. Now the top, depending on what stage of bloom this plant is in, the top can have kind of a little bit of a cone shape, or if it's later on along, it's going to get kind of like a spriggly. Huh? Spriggly a word? Spriggly a word? I don't know. Is it a word? Yeah. And you can also have these little, I don't know what you call them, but sprigs. I think sprigs is a cool word. Sprigs. 
and they're just little points, yeah? It's kind of like a pineapple shape. All right. Now, in the flowers, if you look at a detail of the flower, you can kind of see some little petals of the flower, too. You can do that for some of the ones that are up closer, I'd say. And you can also add some little stems, and they're going to kind of start straight up if they're over here. But then they'll kind of go off to the sides like that and sides like that. So straight up in the middle and off to the sides, kind of curved off to the sides, okay? And you can put a little line back there for like the line of the lava or something, you know? Maybe even if you want, you can put a uh, like a distant volcano shape. You could have snow on it, whatever, you know? All right, and now that I've got my silver sword kind of formed up, I'm going to start by outlining some of these little sprigs that are right close kind of just facing the viewer yeah yeah these i think these are the swords and they're silver ahina hina very silver but i find if i do them first then i can put other things behind them now they got quite a bit of those swords, but I might make a little less just to make it easy on myself. Okay, and now that I got my base outlined, I'm going to start outlining my flowers. This looks like it's kind of a young bloom, like maybe the beginning of the bloom. It could get really big up here if you got a lot of paper. Okay, now I'm just going to continue on with the kind of like the dome and some more of those sprigs, kind of like in that pineapple shape, okay? A lot of what's going to make this look like a silver sword is how I go about shading it. And I'll keep these flowers and things right up front, and I'll shade things in the background. I'll keep some of these sprigs kind of white up front, and flowers, and I'll do more shading behind them. But before I do that, I'll give some directional lines of these flower stems. Kind of straight up in the middle, and then they kind of curve as they go to the side, yeah? Just kind of having these directional lines is going to be good for this picture. And now we'll go about shading this silver sword. And I'll use a couple of pens maybe, and you can use pencil or whatever. But you can go ahead and get it nice and kind of dark in between these sprigs. And I'll get the center of this plant quite dark. And there you have a drawing of a silver sword. <laughs> you can color your silver sword drawing with colors, paints, whatever you got handy, and really bring this beautiful flower to life. When you return, we'll join a silver sword painting workshop at Frank Shaner's art studio in Kula, Maui. For art, gifts, and lessons, visit patrickcheng.com.
Now let's go up country to a Silver Sword painting party at Frank Shaner's studio in Kula, Maui. Before the class, Frank and I headed up to the summit of Haleakala to see if we could see the Silver Swords. This is the original silver right here. Because it's winter time, the Silver Swords are not blooming, but we did get to see some of the younger plants. And by the way, I'd recommend wearing long pants. And in no time at all, we were ready to get down and get warm and get painting. For those of you who don't know, Frank Shaner is a former radio personality turned funkadelic artist. <laughs> to enter his studio is like being in a magic garden. And on that note, we started painting. For the anatomy of the silver sword, let's look at what's deep inside and what's furthest out, yeah? In just about everything I'm painting, I'm thinking about what's underneath, what's on top, what's far away and what's closer. What's behind the petals, what's behind the flowers, and let's do that first. Finish off with things like these. That'll be our candy, uh, our reward for working so hard. And after working so hard, the artist had beautiful paintings to show for it. While walking along by the sea, we walked all the way to the sunset. My beautiful rainbow and me. Beautiful rainbow. After all that painting, we kicked back, enjoyed some good food and company in the presence of our brand new works of art. <laughs> what did you paint, Frankie? This is Bobby Silva and Harold Silva, the Silva Souls. Nice people. Mahalo Ricky Guild and Frank Shaner for hosting this Silver Sword painting party. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's erupting volcanoes and the amazing silver sword plants that grow upon them. I'd love to see what you did, so you can send pictures of you and your art to my website at patrickching.com. <laughs> Aloha.